This is Nick Thomas. Um, you're watching Knockout Blow on Dumbout.net. And I'm here with James and Lee. You already know who he is. That's Saint. <laughs> right, so tell, tell everybody like, who you are, what gym, about your gym. And, um, well, I'm a really good looking half breed fighter from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I live in Sullivan Lake, actually. Um, but no, I uh, started doing Jiu Jitsu 92 with Helson Gracie. Um, kickboxing back then, already wrestling, things of that nature. Um, Halston was telling me about this big uh, UFC thing that was coming out in, 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 um, in 93. Tentatively, it was a scheduled date, it's UFC stuff. And then he was showing me these underground fights with Zulu and Hickson and you know, all the old school uh, uh, stuff you know, back then or whatever. Um, you got some interview or no? Can you cut some interview or no? Yeah, we cut. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, ours is totally not cut. We're a real site. We're not like the rest of these pussy ass sites. <laughs> okay. On the internet. Well, I like to be yeah, fucking me. I don't know. Yeah, right. I like adjectives to describe right. myself. So, anyway, um, yeah, so, so I started doing that and then uh, kind of evolved into. Um, we, we, I opened up uh, the MASH fight team, James Lee's MASH fight team, um, in 1999. Uh, a buddy of mine who passed away in the military, we started a, uh, it was actually originally, MASH was called ITC, International Training Center, on 8th Southfield on the Detroit side, before I first started the gym up, and then uh, I was always talking shit, like, I'm, I'll mash that motherfucker, this, that, you know, just talking shit, whatever. Oh, yeah. And you're like, yeah, that's it, you should, like, man, you should, as much as you say mash the motherfucker, you should say mash motherfucking fight team, or something, you know, I was like, I'm like, damn, you know, that's a good acronym. So I said, you know, martial art submission hybrid, Sounds pretty damn good. Yeah. So, um, I can talk about how MASH kind of evolved. And, uh, you know, Brandon Hunt, the, uh, the King of the Cage, 185 uh, pound world champion, was, you know, was my first student. And, you know, him and another guy, Glenn, and, and uh, my buddy Dwayne, we were all thinking, talking about, you know, names and, and Robert Embry. We were all talking about the, uh, the names. So it's kind of how MASH evolved and then kind of bounced around here to here to here. And then, uh, not to be confused with a bunch of poser faggot motherfuckers um, that use my name, that pay me to use my name, uh, Mash Jim. Uh, on Eight Mile. Oh, my God. Uh, I originally started there and they tried fucking me over, stealing my name and keeping it, not paying me. And they, we had to go to court. You know, unfortunately, it didn't work out in their favor. So, but anyway, not to be confused. If yeah. it doesn't say James Lee's Mash Fight team in front of it, so you guys are located at Powerhouse right now? Yeah, it's right here. But we're going to be moving to Nova. Okay. We have a brand new uh, facility, you know, Fusion, uh, Fusion Gym. It's a really, really nice gym out there. Okay. Uh, indoor swimming pools, uh, saunas, you know, jacuzzis, the whole, the whole hookup weight room, plenty of square footage. So we're, we're going to be putting a uh, huge sports, all sports complex in there and uh, doing it there. It should okay. be a really good high retail traffic area, you know, in regards to where it's at over there in Nova. Uh, by the movies and monkeys and all that kind of shit over there. Right. So that should be a real high traffic here for that, that good demographic. You know. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. But yeah, I mean, that's cool. You're moving over to Novak because you need to get a bigger area to pick from. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You got the people you're dragging there. So. Yeah, I, 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 Novak's a really good, like, it's got money, but it's not like Birmingham where it's too bougie. Right, right. I don't want to break a nail. I don't want to get in the face. I don't even face. feel comfortable. Yeah. Right. So it's like, Novak, I got money and I'll still get a little grimy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. kind of how I feel, know what I mean. You fought King of the Cage, uh, pride. pride, which we got to talk about the Pride days because you know, I miss Pride. Man. Me I too. Miss pride. And then uh, in the UFC too. Now, from training to, you know, training young guys to fighting, what's more rewarding? You know, I would have to say, for me, I would say training the guys. Because not everybody who's good at doing it can teach it. You know, and, and if, uh, you know, <clears throat> and, and vice versa, not everybody who coaches it can do it either. So, you know, it, it's kind of even killed, but I really find it really rewarding. Uh, man, there's nothing I, I like seeing them plant those seeds and then seeing them grow and then flourish into something. Right. You know, the, the, the bad part of the game is, you know, there's a lot of douchebags and little faggots who use people. Right. And and uh, let me get where I'm going, and I'm gonna bounce any thanks. Now now that you know, getting these guys up to you know, you know six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and zero is the hard part. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then right. 
But then if these fags run off and, and say, oh, I'm going to join Militich or, you know, I want to go, right. you know, it's like, well, bro, if everybody stays here, we'll have a good, good squad. Why the fuck right. keep bouncing, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you know, fuck you, I'm out. That's, 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 that's fake, man. There's a lot of fake people. Yeah. And speaking of fake people in MMA, I mean, you've been around for a long time. Before they were even, like, using the term MMA, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was uh, on HP. Some dude came <laughs> yeah. up today and he goes, "Hey, it's not you. It's not, that guy fights UFC." What the fuck <laughs> you know what I mean? But you get those guys that wear like an affliction T-shirt. They think they're bad just because they watch it UFC. And that is and that's getting a little annoying. I can get over it. Yeah. Or they come to one practice and think they're gonna be awesome, and then they're like, "Oh shit, I just got down." No, but the, the best, the best is at the bar. I got some fucking stripper telling me your boyfriend fights in UFC. <laughs> I'm like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> No, you know, he fights in a bullshit amateur show in a bar. Right. Okay, it's like comparing a, a little league football game to the NFL. Right. And your boyfriend is not fighting in the UFC. Yeah. Uh, since you brought up a strip game, we were talking to Mo. <laughs> like last year we were talking to Mo, and he was saying that you had that on lockdown here. Okay. And you, uh, he was mentioning a couple of establishments. Okay. Like, talk about that all sure, yeah, no, absolutely. I don't give a fuck. I don't right, cool. Yeah, because you own a different company. Yeah, um, I own an, uh, an agency. Uh, basically, what I do is I, I place uh, strippers into all, all the, uh, the clubs. And, um, you know, basically, we... Uh, <coughs> Did you need... Just saying goodbye. Okay, thanks. Call later. Okay. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm like this. I'm trying to be, you know, like, okay, peace. I'm doing an interview. Mm-hmm. You mean about talking to fucking it up? Mm-hmm. And he's just sitting, sitting there. Right. Okay, leave, motherfucker. I'm doing it. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> um, the agency. Um, I place some out. My head, I own an agency that, that, that headhunts strippers. I basically supply all the strip clubs in Detroit, Metro Detroit, with, with their dancers. I'm yeah. With their entertainment. They pay me for each girl that I bring. We have definitely utilized your services then. Please do. It's <laughs> like a couple weeks ago at Bazookis, probably. No, I don't fuck with Bazookis. The only bar that doesn't deal with any agents. Any what? Any, any agents. agents. Oh, really? Well, we'll, we'll stay away from them then. That's why they have shitty talent. Yeah. What about the, uh, what's it, the uh, Coliseum? I bought Coliseum, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, Coliseum was sponsoring the King of the Cage event. Uh, oh, okay. So, yeah. Now, talking about Pride, and you fought in the UFC too. What I mean, compare like the, the Japanese crowd to the American crowd. Compare, I mean, just the whole atmosphere of Pride. You know, I man. The thing, the thing is, I, well, I fought when I fought in Pride. Actually, it was in America, but when I, my, I have fought in Japan. I fought mm-hmm. in, uh, in in Pancrase mm-hmm. over, over in, in Japan. But um, the difference that I found with 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 the Japanese crowd as opposed to the American crowd, the Japanese fans are obviously way way more sophisticated and educated in regards to the sport. And they're way more respectful. Um, American fans are fucking drunk, spitting all over the place, screaming, fucking kill them, get off the ground, you fucking faggots. Right. Ah! You know, and then the Japanese are quiet, transition evolves, a guy gets out of a submission escape, you know, and they're like, ah. Yeah. You know, like, they, they, they appreciate the, the art, artist side of, of, of MMA, you know? Yeah. Not just, just fucking kill him, smash his face and. Oh, you tapped out, you fucking pussy. Right. Liddell, you fucking suck. Yeah. And he wins, you know, he beats Van like, Oh, Liddell, you're the shit. Right, right. <laughs> just right. Like, Shut up, man. The, uh, I don't know, I wish um, whenever UFC bought them, they should have just called it, renamed it UFC East or something like that. If they were worried about branding. And just, you know what I mean? So it's shutting it down. When we got Dream now, I guess. You know what I mean? It just, it just, even with UFC running, it just wasn't the same. Right. Because right. Pride took better care of their fighters than, than UFC does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Yeah. yeah. A lot. Yeah, so I'll call a whole bunch of them right now. <laughs> I'll tell you, they got Pride took way better care of them than, than, than uh, than, uh, you know. Actually, Mark Hunt just texted me. Oh, he was, yeah, Mark Hunt. He's got a fight. He's got a fight coming up in the UFC, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, the end of this month. You had him How? up at one of your mass gyms in, what, was it Grand Rapids or something like that? Or over there, that way? Right? Yeah, yeah. Cause one of my boys, JJ, um, oh man, JJ, was out, I mean, I went to school with him, um, but he was out there. I think he had some, he had his pictures of Hunt, and, uh, and he was like, "Yeah, Mark Hunt's gonna make sure you." It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All the way from Australia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How? 
how is he gonna make 265? He's already down the weight, bro. Is he really? Yeah. Because he's a big dude, isn't he's he? He's a heavy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> My shoulder's big. I, as soon as they booked that match, I was like, man, how is Mark Hunt gonna make 265? You know, but he's already down in weight, ready yeah, to go, huh? He's two or three kilos over, and that was, and that was last week, so he's been, you know, working his ass off, and he looks really good. Okay. So you ever gonna fight again? Yeah, man. Um, basically, I was hurt for a year after I got hurt in my UFC back, fight. Yeah, back in your back? Yeah, I hurt my back. Um, so I was out for a year with that. Then um, I got into a lawsuit with these fuckheads, these mass gym fags. Yeah. Okay. So I was in court. Basically, it was. Long story short, there was a non-compete notice between me and the contract that we had had. So technically, I couldn't really train with my own guys who were members of the gym. Uh-huh. So even though they breached the contract, my attorney had advised me not to teach or open up, break the non-compete in case a judge didn't see things my way. Because they're going to want to say obviously that I breached, you know. So anyway, uh, um, that's why I couldn't train with my guys. So obviously, if I don't have a gym and I can't train anywhere. Can't fight. I don't fucking want to take a fight. I can't train right. my guys. You know what I mean? So it was kind of stupid. So now once once the lawsuit got done, it took me a while working with with, with uh, Powerhouse because they were going to move upstairs or take over the upstairs. And then I was then they finally moved me down here after eight months of waiting for them to move out. <laughs> oh wow! You know, because the owner of Powerhouse said, "Hey James, let's put MMA gyms in all the powerhouses worldwide." And that's why I was like, "Fuck yeah, let's run it." You know, a uh, huge opportunity. You know, to to, to grow the sport. So um, now that I'm here. Um, you know, we're, we're moving over to know by now, but uh, we're definitely in. So now, now, once I get the gym up and running where it's making money, um, I got to put all my energy into keeping it home for these guys because if I can't pay the instructors, you know, we, we just opened. So I, I got to bust ass to get this, the, the number of students up in here. Mm-hmm. And, and once I do that, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a fight, which uh, UFC is not too. Uh, let me take a couple tune up fights right now before I go back and fight. Not just, I talked to Joe Sullivan a couple years. Four or five days ago. Oh, really? Trying to get on the uh, the the Detroit card. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Which is bullshit, Joe Silva. That's some bullshit, man. What's that? Told me to fuck off, basically, in a nice way. Oh, really? Oh, I can't go on the card. Let's take a tune-off fight. A couple tune-off fights. Yeah. But Ricardo Almeida can be gone for four fucking years and come right back to you to go over to the UFC. Right. Yeah. No biggie. Told yeah, that's fucked twice up. Twice as long as I've been gone. It's You're a mainstay in Detroit. You belong on that card, really. Joe doesn't really care. Because because I did point that out to him. Yeah. And uh, he said that he's not really worried about selling the place out that Quentin and Machida will do 